And we're outside in the Oklahoma heat with Brandy Dixon, who's with Fab Lab. Brandy, good to have you. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you too. Let's talk a bit about Fab Lab before we go inside. What is it? So Fab Lab is a nonprofit makerspace in Tulsa, and we are dedicated to teaching people about digital fabrication and how to use our tools. So you can become a member and use our space, uh, and you can also be a part of any of our education programs, and we use, help you use our space as well. Why would they want to use your tools? So we have uh, digital fabrication tools, 21st century technology, mm -hmm. um, laser cutters, CNC milling machines, and we teach people about design. And these are really useful skills if you want to get into engineering, if you're already an engineer, if you want to prototype, if you're an artist. Um, and there's actually a lot of job opportunities when you have these types of skills. Yeah, because back in the old days, you gave somebody a floppy disk or you mailed it to them in California and they sent you a plastic widget so you can see it first, and now you can see it built. Yeah, now you can design it yourself in a free or inexpensive software, and you can come to our lab, and you don't even have to buy your own 3D printer. You can That's come 3D print it on fantastic. ours. Fantastic. Well, let's go inside and take a look, okay? Absolutely. All yeah. right. All right, so we're on the Flight Night Mobile Fab Lab, and this is our laser cutter. It is by far the most popular machine we have in the lab. So students can learn how to design on this in about 45 minutes, and we can start making some simple things. So you can see an engraving here. The machine also cuts things out. Okay, before before you go any farther, yeah, what's in here is 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 designed. Did they did this unit make that design? Yes. So um, the laser can do two different things. It will engrave or raster, and or it will cut uh, with a vector line. So this is a wood material, and this design itself was done on the computer. And when you turn on the machine, it goes ahead and the laser comes right out of this spot right here. Not this tube, that's actually just a air tube, but comes down from this mirror and this lens here. Mm -hmm. And it just runs back and forth, just like a printer, but instead of putting down ink, it burns the material. And that's the finished product. Yes. Okay, so hold it, that steady, if you would, for just a second yeah. so our cameraman can get a shot of it. What, what happens with those? So uh, these are actually from our Maker Faire event that we just had a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we gave these out to people who visited the trailer as tokens. Kids love to keep them. Um, they keep them for, you know, whatever they want. Sure. Uh, and it just shows them a little example of what can be done on these types of machines. Now, yeah, use other materials? Yes. So wood is the most popular. Acrylic is another one. So I've got a clear piece here. Um, the kids are always really impressed that it looks like glass. Uh, it cuts really nicely. It gets what's called a flame polished edge when we mm -hmm. cut this instead of the burnt edge like this. And we can get this in lots of different colors. Oh, really? So, yeah. Um, so the kids can make, we've had birdhouses that were every color of the rainbow made out of acrylic. Sweet. Yeah. Um, and then we can cut softer materials like craft foam. We can cut through leathers and fabrics. Mm -hmm. It's really versatile. And of course, you can design whatever shape you want. So really, your imagination is the only limitation when you're using machines like I this. I understand. Very cool unit. And I can certainly see why this is the most popular. Yes. What's What do you got next to show us? So uh, we have two lasers, um, and that's just so that we can serve more students at a time. We like to be able to serve mm -hmm. a whole class size. Uh, and this machine, we will often the kids will design, and then we want to take their learning a step further. Mm -hmm. So we will teach them how to add lights and electronics or motors to some project that they've designed. And we would use this unit to do that. All right, so this is our electronics cart. So we can roll this into a school and you can see some of our tools here. We've got a soldering iron, a little widget to help hold your project, um, just basic tools. And we can bring an entire classroom set of these into a space and have up to 24 students soldering at one time and making their own electronics um, and making their projects light up and making their projects spin. But you do more with this than just using a soldering gun. Uh, starting and you also I mean you're in a teaching mode when you work with these youngsters aren't you yeah so a lot of them have never encountered things like this they've never made their own circuits so when we're figuring out oh I want to add lights to this they mm -hmm. need to put resistors in they need to figure out what battery pack they need to use okay so, they don't have a background on that what, what do you do so all of it is pretty much really basic algebra so I'll show them a couple of online tools to help them set up equations, mm -hmm. and then they quick go through the steps. But the trick is don't tell them it's algebra until they're all the way done with the project. Because <laughs> if you say the dirty A word, then they don't think they can do it. But How do they react capable. to you when it's over? 
Uh, usually wide eyes. They feel like they've been tricked. Um, and some of them like actually feel really cool. Like, yeah. oh, I did that and I thought it was scary. Sweet. But they were totally capable. What's underneath? Uh, so just underneath here, this is just a tabletop for setup. Um, so we can you know, show mm -hmm. you guys what we do. But for in the classroom, we have an entire class set of these. So there's 24 um, soldering units with all of the things that we need to solder safely in a classroom. How nice this is. What's next? Uh, so after this, um, if you really want to decorate your project or go a little bit further and just make things look really pretty, mm -hmm. we've got our vinyl cutter, which is our last digital fabrication machine we have on the lab. All right, so this is our vinyl cutter. So it's another one of the machines where you can design on the computer and this will cut out exactly what you want. We have a lot of members that use this machine in our space to um, add things to their business. So you where's know? the blade? Brand? Ah, so it cuts by using this really tiny blade there. So you might be able to see it just sticks out enough just to cut through the top layer of this sticky material. So if I peel this back here, you can see it sticks really oh, yeah. well. And then it's got a backing that's paper and we just throw it away, recycle it. Um, and this vinyl, most of the stuff that we keep in the lab is outdoor approved for seven years. So mm -hmm. if you do stop by our lab in Tulsa, we have some decals on the front of our windows. Mm -hmm. Those were all made at the lab and they've been up almost eight years now. So this stuff lasts a really long time. And again, this is probably one of those machines kids love. Yes, um, you know, they make stickers, they can make whatever they want. Uh, it's what makes their projects really pop when they're done. So, you know, you make that little miniature greenhouse and it's shiny and glass, but it doesn't look good <laughs> until you put a big old sticker with your name on it. What a great way to, and you're involved in education through the Fab Lab, are you not? Yes, the education program manager. So we no. do all of our outreach and programming. How many classrooms? Uh, we actually don't have a classroom in our lab right now. So what we have is a, a conference room space that we can flip over. And then having this mobile lab has been really good for us because we are able to take the machines to the students, which eliminates busing and it eliminates the need to have a space in our lab. So okay. we can go right to them. This has really been an education for me. I mean, I didn't realize, I for some reason didn't think you could take the things out of the out of the building. Yeah, um, the only thing that we really can't take out of the building is we have a mini shopbot CNC mill that we have taken, um, but our shopbot is eight by four feet, so it doesn't fit through most doors. No, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't. yeah, but we can bring all of these other machines straight to the kids and make it so much easier for students to see all of these cool tools and be exposed. Randy, before we slip out of here, and, and we, this has been a wonderful opportunity for all of us involved, all the folks behind the camera and everything, to see firsthand what you guys are involved in. What's down the road? Um, so we're continuing our education programming, looking at you know adding fun new projects and things like that. Um, it would be awesome if we could do like evening classes that weren't just with schools. We could open it up to the community. But right now we don't have the space for that. So we're hoping to have a space in the future where we can have some classrooms and um, you know open it up. Right now, if we wanted to have a community class, that conference room in the lab is used for member classes. So if we had more classrooms in our space, we could have those member classes classes running in tandem with community programs and I'm, really I'm open sure there are folks out there that would love to support a project like this. Now we're talking, you know, you, you, you've got to be a corporation to be able to add the kind of support mm -hmm. that you need. You want to make a pitch? I mean, this is a perfect time. So uh, we have a development director, Brian Carr, and we have our executive director, Nathan Pritchett. Both mm -hmm. of those, their info can be found on our website, and they are the perfect people to ask about that. So call either one, and they'll be able to steer you in the right direction. Absolutely. Uh, I'm assuming, and this is a big assumption on my part, that you derive a great deal of satisfaction out of watching these young ones light up when they see, first, what this stuff can do, and second, what it can do with their ideas. Yes, absolutely. Um, some of them, I mean, they're super creative and they're inspired by their classmates and they do things differently than I would. So I learn things from the students just as much as they learn from me. About out of time, if a school's interested in having you on campus, how do they get you? You can email me. My email is brandy with an I at symbolfablabtulsa.org and I will get back to you as soon as I can. How far in advance? Uh, I would say at least six months. We do have some dates open in fall right now if you'd like to schedule for this semester. So it kind of is a fluid situation, but you're... Yes, yeah. So when I say in fall, I might have entire months close up by next week. I got you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for taking time yeah. and thanks for bringing this unit out and, and you know, I mean, I had no idea. I mean, I knew what you did. 
but I had no idea you were portable. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, thank you again for taking time to visit with us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more right after this.